Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Heartway Farms. Uh, Josh here with Brian, and we have started our family road trip from Illinois all the way out to Maine, and we've made our first stop here in New York. So we are with some of our dear friends that are quasi homesteaders. Yeah. And um, and we're making our first stop, and we're going to do a quick garden tour. We're going to go over a couple things regarding how you can make your garden work for you in all seasons of life. Yeah. And go into Brian's garden and how it's going here for he and him and his wife here at the farm. What do you mean all seasons of life? Yeah. Are you saying? Are, are you saying? <laughs> All right, so real quick, we're gonna go over Brian's garden here, but one of the things right off the bat that I thought was very interesting is I saw black plastic on the garden. Yeah, that's a change. I think when I was here almost nine years ago. Has it been that long? It's been that long. I thought um, you, you started a Back to Eden garden. We had talked about it at the time about getting it going and get it, getting yep. it up and going. Um, so you've about nine, nine to eight years yeah. you've been working yeah, on somewhere in there. the Back to Eden garden. But one of the things I thought was really interesting and I thought it applied to a lot of our viewers actually was mm -hmm. how do I transition from a market garden or a high production garden yeah. or a very intensive garden as far as having to get out once a week and weeding it yeah. to all of a sudden now I see black plastic out here. Yeah. And um, I think just from talking with you real quick, life has, has matured for you. Yeah. And you become a grandfather. Yep. Um, and you're traveling a lot for your job, yep. so you're not as anchored as you were before. And so you had to come up with a solution how to kind of knock back weeds and still have production. Yeah. Well, for us, the garden, we actually in, made it larger okay. right, when, we, when we started the garden. But it used to be a particular size, but then we made it larger, right. considerably larger. And my daughter, Mariah, actually wanted to do a farm stand. Okay. But organic was very important to our family. Okay. And so it takes a while, like it took like five years to get officially uh, organic, okay. according to what they say. The standards, yeah. Um, but she wanted to, you know, we wanted to find a way to accomplish that and lessen the weed load and help the water situation. So we did the back to Eden method, I'm sure. Right. You know. Yeah, lasagna gardening, deep mulch system, yeah. back to Eden garden. It's kind yeah. of all the same thing. Yeah. And so that's what we've done for years and years and years. But my daughters now are both married mm -hmm. and have moved. So it's just my wife, Deanna, and I. Okay. And we wanted to lessen the workload. So we said, let's do black plastic. Okay. And because even though you do have uh, the wood chips, and we would put them, you know, six to eight inches every year. Right. Uh, which has really helped the soil tremendously, right? But you still had to maintain that more so than you do with a black plastic. Okay. Because you rightly said, I do a fair amount of travel for various reasons. Um, we decided to try it this year for the first time, and oh my goodness, it has just been a wonderful thing for us. Okay. Yeah. So real quick, um, I, I think something, observations that I've seen here is that you guys have had, like a lot of the country, yeah. very little water. Yeah. But in this case, you've only had to water your garden twice so far this year? Yep. Okay, and part of that is because the Back to Eden garden that's underneath the black plastic mm -hmm. is a, it's a giant sponge. Mm -hmm. It's got all that organic matter. Mm -hmm. It's very um, loose and uh, readily accepts the water that it does get, yep. and it holds it. Yep. Um, so you've got that deep tilt underneath it that's gonna hold that water. Yeah. But now you got the black plastic on top of it, which is also helping with the... Well, it's, it's helping in two ways, the heat, that, okay. that it warms the soil, which our garden has never exploded so quickly. Okay. I mean, it, we've always had a pretty decent garden, but the, the maturity level at which it got to it that quickly was, was fast. So this year you have had an explosive growth with? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing that we kind of thought might happen, but has confirmed that it did happen, mm -hmm. was when we cut the hole to plant the plant or the, the row, mm -hmm. what I was concerned about was, are the plants going to get enough moisture? It's actually the black plastic catches it and then funnels it to where the plants actually are. Okay. So watering hasn't been an issue, and plus the black plastic, like the wood chips, helps keep the moisture in anyway okay. that you do get. So. Okay. So it's a, it's, a, it's a relatively inexpensive way to have a weed barrier of sorts. Yep. Yes, I know that we're going to get comments about, you know, that you can get organic weed barrier, you can get cloth weed barrier, you can get use black plastic. 
Um, this is the point of the whole conversation is to say that you can adapt your systems as life changes, as seasons change in you know, life, you right? Could, you, you can just say, Brian, now as you've gotten older, you can actually there we go. say that. There we yeah. go. No, see, we, we, we had a strong passion to be outside and do what we do, right? but now our interests are divided with travel or going and seeing the kids, the grandkids or whatever. Right. So we needed to find a solution that didn't require us to be in the garden quite as much. And this ties right in with the Hartway Farms values. So we have family, community, and hope, right? And your family was core that you were here with yeah. for a long time. You've always been involved with your community locally, yeah. but your community's kind of grown because your family has grown, so the community structure has kind of flexed a little bit, right? Yeah. So the, the hope that you've tied in with that is that you still are doing what you want to be doing, yeah. and you have a passion to do that, but how do I make that, how do I, instead of just throwing it to the side and saying I give up on it, is how do I adapt and overcome and make that happen still in spite of those things? Yeah. And you'll see some changes for us where we did more of a cover crop. So like we have a lot of squash and things like sure. that, but it still scratched the itch for us to have that garden experience that we wanted. And my daughter who isn't here, who did the farm stand, right. we decided not to do the farm stand, which was a connection to community that we really appreciated. Yeah. But now what we're able to do with just the two of us is and give the stuff away. You know, come okay. come to the garden and paw through and get what you want, whether we're saying that to family or friends okay. or whatever. So do you uh, does anyone in your family directly or in your local community do they do they can or preserve this stuff or is your family locally doing that at all? Yeah, we actually are canning and, okay. and freezing this year. Okay. okay. So you're putting up storages as well. Yeah, but we have we have so much. Now I think is. talking with Deanna there was a there was an initial thought of maybe doing a smaller garden, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then with everything going on in the economy and the food scarcity at times, oh, most definitely. Uh, rising costs. Um, there was kind of this, once again, this re-engagement of maybe we should step back into mm -hmm. having something that's more productive. Mm -hmm. But once again, how do we do that? So I wanna dive into the Back to Eden garden that has now been covered with plastic, which would be completely counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. But in this case specifically, you've adapted, you've overcome, and it's thriving for you. Yeah, it's really been a blessing it's for our family. Yeah, it really so has been. Let's go ahead and jump into the garden and just see what's going on and see what he's producing. Awesome. So here you've got beets going on. Yeah. And they're pretty dense, right? They're, they're real dense. We didn't we didn't actually thin them this year, but we still have very large beets. And we do about two rows of those because we don't eat a lot of them. Okay. Um, but they look like they're thriving. They are. They are. And everything does actually. Everything is green. I see very little weeds because you have stuff protecting the weeds here. Yeah. And that's the thing. Of it. And once they mature, you don't even have to worry about weeding. Okay. Obviously, we've got carrots. Again, enough for the grandkids to come in and pull a few. Okay. You got to eat a peck of dirt before you die. There you thing. go. So. Like it. Hands and hands and feet in the dirt. Yeah. We got some squash type things here. Yeah, we've got two zucchinis. All right. Pl plenty. I only really need one, but we did right. two. And then two summer squash hills as well. Okay. And then <clears throat> right over in this section, we've got the uh, carnival acorn squash. And again, we were kind of looking to cover it. Now, gardens we've had before, we would have six rows of beans. Okay. This year we only have two, so we were looking for cover crops to use the space Sure. But still produce. Yeah, have something growing, something producing. But yeah. if, it, if it thrives, great. If it doesn't, then not the end of the world. Yeah. And what's great about your your zucchini, uh, excuse me, the um, acorn squash or your spaghetti squash or your other types that we have, right. they, they keep. Yeah, shelf stable. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so as you kind of go through, uh, these have been overgrown by our tomatillos, which are here. I love tomatillos. They're just such interesting plants. To yeah. Me. But, they look like um, they're getting a little husk over them there. Yeah, they are. They are. Still a little maturing yet to do, but yes, makes a great relish and you know that kind of thing. These are shallots that are kind of being overtaken by the tomatillos. Okay. But, but they're thriving. Once again, they're thriving, and the tomatillos probably are helping to hold some of that um, that moisture in there for the shading nature of it, right? Yeah. And for onions, they require a lot of moisture. Yep. <clears throat> and our bulb sizes are large, so I know they're getting their moisture. Okay. You know, they're, they're, they're so good based size. off the end product, you have yeah. a, a nice dense bulb. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. We got red onions I see here. Yep. We have red onions here, so they're your, you know, the bulb size for this season, this time of season. We probably got a little bit more growth. That I'm very happy with that. Yeah, that's that's great for a, a meal right there for yeah. sure. Yeah. And then I get some stuff over here. Um, what are, what are these things here, Brian? I don't think you have you grown these before. I've never grown these before. Okay. This is like a sweet potato. Okay. 
We did this with from slips and it was an experiment. We've never done it and it kind of just exploded along here. I'm excited to dig it up and see what we get. Because, okay. Uh, so real quick, you, you cut a slit in your uh, plastic here and then you have uh, like, it looks like some straw. Yes. Okay. What we did was we, we made sure that there was runoff room so they did receive this sufficient amount of moisture. So either we cut a big circle around a hill or something like that, okay. so that or we would create a, a cutout or if we had an extra piece of plastic that was three feet that we could use again, we did that. Okay. Yeah. All right, and just, just so you guys know from an up close view here, I have, I've probably seen in this whole space that we've walked through, I think I've seen, if I, if I, if I said 10 weeds, <laughs> were, I'm probably too many. Um, literally standing right here, I see a, a handful, but that's, a, that's it. So it's, this is doing well in reducing your workload. Yeah. And I got to give a shout out to Deanna because my wife would be the one that would come out here and just, she really doesn't like weeds. And right. so she would work and work and work. And she said to me just the other day, she said, Brian, I'm actually enjoying the garden this year. Because she's not having to come out here and weed so much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She comes out and we, we pick the little things that are near the plants, but that's it. Right. Right. Because there's not, there's not the space for them to take in there. So, yeah. All right. So we've got your sweet potatoes and then we go into more, it looks like a lot of squash. Yeah. This is an acorn okay. squash that has gone crazy. Yep. We expected it to go towards the left. It actually came towards our other plants. Okay. Um, and then the part that's cleared uh, was all garlic. Okay. We probably had about 600 plants of garlic that we've already harvested. In your opinion with the garlic side of things, you were saying something to the effect of that, that square foot for square foot, you think it's the most high density, high value crop that you could probably produce. Right? High profit if you're reselling it. Okay. Absolutely. It has great value in you know, fresh garlic grown in an organic fashion. And if you look at the soft neck, hard neck varieties, right. um, they, they hold a, a lot of value for folks. And they're super shelf, like they're, they're shelf stable to the point yeah. of where you don't have to worry about them going bad and losing your profit on them. No, that's right. Six to eight months okay. um, is probably ideal peakness of freshness. So that means as a farmer, if I'm gonna sell it for resell or I'm gonna try to offset some costs, I have time to get rid of that. I have time to That's find right. a market base. I can raise a bunch of it and maybe have to sit out for a little while. And you, you guys raise hard neck variety, correct? Correct. correct. Okay. Oh, actually, the, the thing about the six months, eight months, okay. you, you can affect that on how you store it. Okay. Like if you do not trim the roots off after you harvest them, okay. um, that will actually be a point of decay sooner. So if you trim the roots off of it, you actually are extending your shelf life for resale. Okay. Is that why people maybe trim them and braid them then as well to create yep. the airflow and, yep. and get rid of the stuff that would create mold or rot? Yeah. Okay. And since we do hard neck, we actually trim uh, the hard neck plant portion higher off of the bulb. Okay. And the reason for that is to create a barrier for mildew or whatever pathogen may try to get in. Okay. And it actually helps preserve the bulb longer as well. So trimming it with a little bit of extra on it right. actually helps preserve it. Helps keep it buttoned down. That's correct. Okay. And then trimming off the roots okay. also does. Because it doesn't have that organic matter that's going to yes. just sit there and rot on it. Yeah. Okay. And, and then drying is hugely important. Okay, making sure it's got enough airflow to dry around it. Yeah. Okay. We, and then with the garlic, real quick, so you did a hard neck variety. Mm -hmm. Have you guys done anything? I think it's called with escapes. Yeah. Have you have you used those or have you sold those before? Or We've it, not sold them, but my but Deanna does make what does she make like a pesto with them? Escape and it, pesto. And okay. it, it's amazing. Is it more of a mild gar garlic flavor? It is. Flavor? It okay. is. It's really mild. A mild it's, garlic flavor. I'll say that the right way. Yeah. The yeah. tongue twister there. Yeah. <laughs> so, but no, yeah, we do. And you have to cut those off when they're growing, by the way. Okay. Because the energy then goes into the bulb. If you leave it going into the seed pod, your bulbs will stay very small. Okay. So you're pretty, from a production side, you have to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, like I said, the garden looks great. I love the fact that you guys were willing to kind of pivot and make yeah. an adjustment. And I think that's the other thing that we try to communicate with um, our followers, with, with, um, the people that are asking questions is, you know, what if I have something set up one way? How do I make that adjustment? And you guys have done that, um, I think with some intentionality, but mm -hmm. with some unknown results that would be involved with that. Exactly, well said. And you've kind of seen the results, right? Yep. Um, so the proof is in the pudding. I saw the second watering that you're starting to do. Um, so all of this greenery is is tapping into the, the moisture of the earth that's underneath this here, and it's it's thriving. I have not watered this portion for two months. Okay. 
I mean, I'm, I'm, the watering that you spoke of that I've done this morning is over there where we're not uh, standing. So right. all of this hasn't been watered in two months and we have literally had no rain yeah. for six weeks. Yeah, there's a lot of people dealing with a lot of a lot of dry uh, drought situations and, and lack of water. So thankfully we're in the Midwest um, and we've had <laughs> an abundance. Um, but yeah, everyone everyone's dealing with their different ecologies wherever they're at there. So. Yeah. Love it. You're doing great. Um, it's super encouraging. Hopefully it's encouraging for you guys that you can, maybe you start off for five years setting up in a uh, Back to Eden garden, doing the process of, of reducing your weeds and setting up your garden space. But then you're like, you know what? I'm just not in this phase anymore. Don't feel like it's off or not. Don't throw it away. Figure out a way to pivot and adjust and still use the space that you've worked really hard on. Yeah to bring that life, that energy, that organic matter, um, and all of the good factors of it, and then just make it work for your situation. Don't give up and feel free to make those adjustments. You have permission, yeah, as absolutely. they would say, to make those adjustments, to make it work for your life situation as you have seasonal changes in you're your very, life. You're very, kind. you're very kind. So thanks, Brian. We enjoy uh, hanging out with you guys always. Uh, we are in New York right now. We're making our way across the eastern side of the United States here. We're gonna be jumping up into Maine. And so come along and see what else we find.